Welcome to Easy Alim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at the topic electrochemistry. So we have been looking at the basics of oxidation numbers and the rules of getting the oxidation or assigning oxidation numbers to numbers. So today we are going to be looking at the redox equation, that is oxidation and reduction equations, and how the oxidation numbers apply in this case. So the reduction and oxidation in form one, we said uh, we defined oxidation and reduction reactions in terms of oxygen transfer and hydrogen transfer. So in terms of oxygen transfer, the removal, the reduction of or removal of oxygen is reduction. The addition of oxygen is oxidation. So when we talk about a redox reaction in form one, it's the simultaneous addition and reduction, addition and removal of oxygen, oxygen in the system. A reducing agent undergoes oxidation. Basically, it's the one that removes oxygen, and then oxidizing agent is the one that um, gives out that oxygen. So, for example, if we take the example of magnesium reacting with copper oxide to form magnesium oxide plus copper in this case magnesium there is an addition of oxygen so it's undergoing oxidation although it's the one that is doing the taking so it's the reducing agent and then copper oxide is undergoing reduction but it's the one that is donating so it is the oxidizing agent so when hydrogen is passed through heated copper two oxide it's oxidized, it is oxidized to copper metal and then in terms of hydrogen transfer, also this is form one. So oxidation is the removal of hydrogen, reduction is the addition of hydrogen. So a redox reaction, there is a simultaneous addition and removal of hydrogen. So the reducing agent is the agent that undergoes oxidation, therefore it's the one that donates hydrogen, it's totally opposite with loss and gain of oxygen. And then the oxidizing agent is a species that undergoes reduction, therefore it's the one that gains hydrogen. For example, when you react hydrogen sulfide uh, in a jar containing chlorine, uh, chlorine gas is, uh, loses hydrogen to sulfur, so the chlorine is reduced to hydrogen chloride gas. So we have looked at the form one definition of what oxidation and reduction is. So today we are going to look at electron loss and gain, which is in regards to now the form 4 work. So loss of electron is oxidation and gain of electrons is reduction. So the substance that uh, gains electron is usually called oxidizing agent. And then reduction is usually the gain of electrons. And the species that donates electrons are usually called reducing agents. So oxidation numbers helps us to keep track of electron movement, movement in a redox reaction. So it helps us to determine the species that are undergoing oxidation and reduction. Oxidation and reduction also can be uh, defined in terms of increase or decrease in the oxidation number. We are going to practice all this so that you can understand what we are saying. So oxidation, num oxidation is also the increase in the oxidation number and reduction is also the decrease in the oxidation number. So for, to help you to remember what oxidation and reduction is in terms of loss and gain of electrons, we use oil rig. So oil rig is oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. Let's take this example now. So the first thing when you get an equation is to convert the equation into an ionic equation. Remember ionic equations, the ions that can dissociate are the ones that are in ionic state and not in solid state. Remember in solid states, the ions are in fixed position. So let's convert this into an ion. So magnesium remains as it is. Then we have two hydrogen ions. These ones it can break and two chloride ions. And you see why we augmented the coefficient two. It means the two applies for the both of the ions in the solution, which reacts to form. Now the magnesium chloride is in aqueous state, so we can dissociate two magnesium ions plus two chloride ions. 
But now the hydrogen is in gaseous state. We said the atomic molecules made of the same element do not dissociate. So it becomes hydrogen gas. So this is what we have. So what you're going to do is now look at the small details of what is happening. So you can see magnesium solid is changing to magnesium ions. Let me just write even the coefficient. And since we have a spectator ion, which is chloride ion, you can see the chloride ion is not changing. So we're not going to use that in our reaction because it's a spectator ion, but you're going to use the hydrogen ions and the magnesium ions. So I want us to pay close attention and see what is happening. So magnesium to move from a solid state to an ion, it means, and we know magnesium is a metal, it reacts by losing electrons. So we know that for magnesium to move as from magnesium solid to magnesium ions, it has lost two electrons. And in this case, because there are two, of course, basically it's four electrons, but that is not important in this case. So we know that magnesium has lost electron. So this tells us from the definition that we had previously that oxidation is loss. So this tells you that magnesium has undergone oxidation. And we said the compound that undergoes oxidation is usually a reducing agent. And then hydrogen, to move from the hydrogen ions to hydrogen gas. Remember hydrogen ions is an unmetal in this case. So the hydride ions, they have already gained electrons. They have already lost electrons, sorry, because they are positively charged. You know, the positive cation occurs when electrons have lost, uh, substances have lost electrons. So that we are starting with an hydrogen ion that is empty. So for it to go back into its neutral state, it needs to gain. So it gains two electrons, that is for each hydride ion. So this means that the reaction it's undergoing is referred to as reduction because it's gaining electron. So it is an oxidizing agent. So if you were to write the equation, we would say that magnesium is undergoing oxidation like this and hydrogen is undergoing reduction. So the first part, what we have done, we have used a loss and gain of electrons to explain a redox reaction. Let's look at increase and decrease in the oxidation number because this is what we are going to be using a lot in this topic. So when you look at the ionic equation, it's magnesium plus two hydrogen ions. I'm going to write the whole equation plus two chloride ions plus two magnesium ions plus two chloride ions plus hydrogen gas. If you look at the oxidation number of magnesium, it's going to be zero. We said it's uncombined. And then the oxidation number of hydrogen is positive one. So you notice in most of the equations, you're not going to be using the two. You can use it to balance the ions or the oxidation numbers, but I would not advise you to use it, but it's not a must, you can use it. And then the chloride ions, we know that chlorine has a uh, oxidation number of negative one. Or the reason why we say it's negative one is because the charge is one minus. That's why it comes to negative one. And then in this case, the oxidation number of magnesium becomes positive two because it has lost electron. For chlorine, it doesn't change. That is the reason why you saw we canceled as a spectator ion. For hydrogen, since it's a diatomic molecule, it's zero. So if you look at them for magnesium is changing from zero to positive two. So there is an increase in the oxidation number. So this tells you there is oxidation. And then if you look at hydrogen, which moves from positive one to zero, you can see there is a decrease in the oxidation number. This tells you there is reduction. So that's how we use both loss and gain of electrons 
increase and decrease in the oxidation number to tell that a reaction is a redox reaction. You'll be required to show these are uh, working, especially if you are told to identify the oxidizing and reducing species in an equation. You are required to show either an increase or decrease in the oxidation number or loss and gain of electrons. So let's look at another one last question in the same regard. So once again, we break down our equation into ions. So we have sodium, which is in solid state, so it's not going to dissociate, plus water, which is... um. So water, so we are going to leave water as it is. Yes, you know that water dissociates into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, but we are not able to tell like the number of molecules, so we leave it into that, but we know that we have OH ions and hydrogen ions in the solution. To form uh, sodium ions, these ones dissociate plus hydroxide ions plus hydrogen gas, all right? So the first thing we'll notice that sodium uh, begins as a solid and it forms uh, sodium ions. You can see for this reaction to occur, it tells you that sodium has lost an electron. Of course, if you balance, it means each atom has lost one electron. So this reaction is oxidation. And when you look at the water, which dissociates to form hydrogen ions and hydrogen gas. So when you look at this reaction, it's we, we can look at the details of like how many electrons have been gained, but it is usually a reduction reaction. We are going to look later on and see the details of the increase and decrease in the oxidation number to help us to see. So this reaction is oxidation. This tells you that sodium is a reducing agent and uh, water is the oxidizing agent. So in terms of the oxidation number, it's going to be more clear of how uh, water undergoes reduction. So let's repeat the equation one more time. Uh, so it is sodium plus two molecules of water to form two sodium ions, aqueous plus hydroxyl ions aqueous plus hydrogen gas. So the oxidation number of sodium and combined is zero. So we can separate, but we know this total compound has an oxidation number of zero, but we can separate for the hydrogen. The oxidation number, remember we said it's always positive one, but you can see there are two of them. Oxygen is negative two. So they will balance out eventually to form a zero because now we have uh, positive 4 and negative 4, which cancels out. But when you look at the atoms, specific atoms, the oxidation number is positive 1, negative 2. For sodium, the oxidation number now is positive 1. For hydroxide, as you can see from the charge, you can go to the details of each and every uh, compound. So if you look at hydroxide ion, the oxidation number is of oxygen is negative 2 plus the oxidation number of hydrogen, which is negative one. So it means the oxidation number of hydrogen is negative one plus positive two, which gives us hydrogen is positive one. So you can see it doesn't change. So this is negative two, and then the oxidation number of hydrogen is positive one. If you have to calculate like I have calculated here, please do so, it will help you to be able to clarify a uh, an atom that you don't know the oxidation number. And then hydrogen oxidation number is zero since it is in uncombined state. So we start with sodium, you see there is an increase in the oxidation number, so it is increases. So it undergoes oxidation. So this tells you this is the reducing agent. And then now this is, I'm happy we've gotten such a question. You see the hydrogen ions, the hydrogen uh, atom in the water has a positive one and also in the product it has one and zero. So we shall compare for both. Let's look at oxygen first. Oxygen is negative two in the reactant and negative two in the product. So that, that, does, that doesn't change. So our main concentration is hydrogen. Hydrogen which changes from positive one 
we have one that changes to zero and then the other one that changes to positive one. So we're not going to change to take the one that doesn't change because it doesn't tell us any effect. But you can see the hydrogen also is forming the hydrogen gas, which is a reduction of the oxidation number. So it is decreasing. So this tells you that this is the oxidizing agent. So that brings us to the end. So this is just a sample of how you can do a redox reaction in terms of loss of electron and gain of electrons or increase or decrease in the oxidation numbers. There's a higher tendency to use increase and decrease in the oxidation numbers because sometimes when you go to the details of loss and gain of electrons, which we are going to use a lot in the electrochemical cell when we come there. But in this case, when you look at the redox reaction, increase and decrease in oxidation numbers gives you a better view. So that brings us to the end of the session. See you in the next lesson.